Okay, we got a connection. Woohoo! Okay, guys, hi, hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited to bring you guys this conversation today with our cats of seed. Um, really, let me just get her on the line here. Um, yes. That seed, that's what we need. Okay. All right, he's going to be getting on with us real quick here. And I'm so excited um, to talk to you guys about the microbiome. It's my favorite science. Woo! I'm so excited. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Where are we coming from? Let's see. We're waiting for seed still. Okay. Um, what are you guys, what's going on? Where are you calling from? I love you guys too. Okay. I'll talk to you guys first. Okay. Um, let me think about a couple of things. Where are you guys from? Argentina. Woohoo! Hi guys. I can't see anything well with my glasses on anymore. It's this thing that I'm just having to live with. Um, I honestly didn't think it was going to be something that would happen to me, but it did. Uh, Tennessee. Okay. Um, and the Philippines. Oh, lumpia is my favorite. I love lumpia. Um, and let's see. Um, Ecuador, England. Um, oh, yeah. UK, Japan. Of course, we know uh, that. Oh, our view. Let's see. Our, uh, where did you, let me see, there was a link, our, uh, let's see, seed is what I have for you to come on to see me. Let's see, requests, ah, you guys, this is what happens, I thought, did I lose connection? Is, did I lose? Here, let me see. At seat. I'm not getting you, Ara. Where are we? Okay, guys, I'm going to come back to you and talk with you for a second so that I can see where it's at. Um, request to be in your room. I, hi, guys. Everybody from Turkey. Okay. I know we're going to have some questions, too. I'm gonna see where we are at. How come it's not coming up for seed? You guys, technology hates me. It's literally the worst. Um, okay, well, the microbiome, you guys, is what we're gonna be talking about today. And we are very much excited about this conversation because it happens to be one of the most important aspects of our, let me see, um, aspects of our well-being. Our well-being has everything to do with our microbiome. And this is a new science only in the last few, uh, well, it's been around for a long time, but the real sort of nitty gritty of the understanding that we have of the microbiome. Um, what is this not working? Um, is just kind of, ah, there we go. Add. Whew. I hope this works because I want Ara to tell this story. This is hers. <laughs> Hi guys. Ah, oh, there you are. <laughs> How are you? Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Oh, I know what it's, it's my fault. I actually requested it for my personal account and I didn't uh, mean it. That was a mistake. There you so. go. I was probably... looking for your, uh, your account as well. Guys, this is our cast. We're so Hi. excited about having her. She's a badass. Um, you guys have no idea what this woman has accomplished and what she's, what gifts she's bringing to the world at this very moment. Um, first off, I just wanted to say cheers to you. Where are you at? You're in LA. Oh yeah. I'm in LA. Perfect. And are you are you quarantining with your family? Cheers. I am I, with my with my four year old and we're we're yeah and my husband and trying to run two startups from uh, from home and yeah it's been Amazing. it's been super interesting <laughs> super super zoomy doing a lot of zoom meetings <laughs> I I've never looked at myself so many times oh, I mean, ever. It's it's so aggressive. What is the, like, why are they doing this? 
I don't know. What is happening? today that like our new lives is just like Hollywood squares. But you know what I do love is that I can run in and out of my meetings and yes. like go take care of stuff in the house yes. and get things. Okay. I literally have a pile of sweaters that I like keep in this room. Yes. That yes. I like take my spit all like t-shirt that has like, That's you know, baby spit all over it and like take that off really quick and throw on the, the, the sweater, you know? Yep. No, <laughs> the, it's really like amazing to just be dressed from like here up. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like business on top, quarantine on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. It's basically, um, yeah. I've never been able to wear like leggings and like Birkenstocks and like socks pulled up over <laughs> in my life yeah my, you look my very professional my, though right now yeah so. my husband calls uh my, my husband uh calls it um uh it basically like quarantine wardrobe is like birth control <laughs> <laughs> totally oh for sure i have like these five dresses that i bought like the same print the same dress yeah. that i just like wear every single day and because i'm just like it's i use it as a towel it's like yeah. it's cotton, right. you know, yeah. and I'm like, I wipe shit off with it by the end of the day. I just throw it in the, in the wash and like put the next one on the next day. And, and actually, I think we, we, cause we left, we live in Venice and we left, <clears throat> we, we um, left Venice like probably, I think maybe seven, seven weeks ago now. But I only actually thought we were going for like a little, like a, you know, like a, a just a few, really just like a week or so. And so it's been interesting to like just live like one of those like, ex, you know, Marie Kondo experiments where, when you just have <laughs> pairs of leggings and three sports bras and like four t-shirts and a pair of sweatpants Absolutely. and like a great skin, like you realize it's like kind of all you, all you need. Yeah. That's, that's all you need. That's it. All you need. So, so listen, we have such a great group of people who are from all over the world, from I, Brazil, I, I, they see all of these amazing places. Like we are joined by the world at the moment. And um, I was just saying to everybody, um, as I was trying to get you on, it's that uh, this, this is my favorite science. I love the microbiome. That's how we met is yeah. by just my love for, for it and you, the fact that in your love for it and that you built a company around it. Um, and I am so excited to introduce uh, not just Seed, which is the probiotic that you've created, yes. Um, but also just to a lot of our viewers, maybe for the first time hearing about what the microbiome is yep. and how important it is to us and um, our well-being. Yes. So um, first off, um, tell us a little bit about first what seed is and how it came about. Sure. And, and I would also just note that one of the reasons we were so equally excited about you was that in your book, you know, there's, I mean, look, there's, there's a lot of gut making and we'll, we'll get into that. And obviously a lot of people... Uh, talk about microbiome and, and probiotics and gut health in all kinds of ways. But in your book, we were, I, the, before we officially met, when we had looked in, in the book, you know, you had actually interviewed one of the most prominent scientists in this field. Martin, Martin Blazer. Yeah, and Mr. Marty Blazer, who actually did this interview recently um, at a webinar. And he, and he's one of our advisors. Um, and, uh, and we were like, oh, this. this we, we went to, we went to the source. <laughs> Um, so we were always like super impressed with that, but seed, as you asked, so seed health is kind of our, our, our company. Um, we focus entirely on microbes, so mostly bacteria, and we look at and pioneer all kinds of applications of how we can use bacteria for human and environmental health on the human side. That looks like everything. And we'll talk about it from probiotics, but not just kind of ingesting probiotics, but we'll, you know, for different ecosystems of the body. So skin, the mouth, the oral microbiome, um, and then because of course we have we have like thirty eight trillion microbes on our body on the inside and the outside and that we are symbiotic with. We cannot yeah. live without. We cannot exist without all these microbes that we're constantly trying to kill. Yeah. <laughs> um, despite uh, one specific microbe tearing up our world right now, uh, right. which of qualify as um, most of them are actually good, <laughs> and many. <laughs> actually looked at to think about how you're going to solve really big problems in human health, um, looking at it from a preventive health perspective, but then also environmental. So we really work across all different um, areas, as, as we will talk about, certainly in probiotics, but um, in women's health, uh, a therapeutic for urinary tract infections, mm -hmm. vaginosis, preterm birth, like 
that's the vaginal microbiome, which we don't talk about vaginas, which we talk about all the time. With which seeds. women have and men don't. Yes. <laughs> but men, but men contribute to. That, that's that is correct, and, <laughs> and so as you, as we can talk about, also are contribute to also disrupting uh, mm -hmm. that ecosystem. Um, uh, and so anyway, so we can we can talk more about that, and then and then also um, in the environmental side, we look at areas where like. And I know you, you recently interviewed Beekeepers Natural founder. Um, we have a probiotic for honeybees, uh, which actually increases their immune resistance to pesticides. We know that like bees dying is a really bad thing. Yeah. Um, we look at microbes for things like soil health. Um, there's a soil microbiome. We look at uh, microbes for thinking about the future of plastic, both like making new materials. Microbes actually can make new materials, but also how microbes will break down plastic. So there's a lot of research happening in that area. That happens under C labs, which is where we do our environmental work. So amazing. All of that. Microbes are, you know, I, one of the things that I always say to, to people about microbes, um, why this sort of idea that we, we know that they exist, but we're only just now kind of getting involved yeah. with them is because our scientists are finally able to see, uh, see deeper inside of ourselves than we've ever been able to. Yeah. And so being this, all of the science that you're talking about, all this, my, these microbes are in, before we kind of knew they existed, but now we're like intimately learning about their, what they do and how they function and their importance. Yeah. So why don't you tell uh, everybody about how seed came uh, about, how you, okay. how you came up with it? Yeah. Um, so I, I've kind of serial entrepreneur and, and, a number of companies very much like in tech and, and consumer um, previous to that worked uh, very much in like media um, design storytelling. Um, but really like truthfully, like after, and have always been a big science nerd. Um, I am not the person who oversees like all of our science and R and D Raja, my co-founder who you've met, who's like, of course, bizarrely smart human being <laughs> drives all of that. Um, but uh, but really, like my my pivot to kind of finally, you know, I think it, as as we know, like most of our life decisions are not just like one moment; they're kind of the culmination of so many things that ha happen in our lives. But I was running and had co-founded a, a tech company in New York, and really just burnt. I mean, honestly, burning myself out, going you know coast to coast and trying to run a company, living in LA in New York, and um and I, and it was a mobile commerce company, and I I had a miscarriage. Um, and I think it was just actually very grateful for miscarriages. We can talk about how beautiful that biology is. And, and so it wasn't one of the like, so sad of the miscarriage as much as it was just like a really existential moment in my life that I was like, whatever I do next, I know how to build companies, I know how to build tech, I know how to raise money. It's like, what are you going to do with all that? Like, how, how do you nudge the world forward every day, which is kind of how we think about um, the work we do at Seed. And really, I knew that health and, and, and I got pregnant very shortly after that. But I think there's kind of two ways women find their way to their bodies, particularly like learning anything about them, because for the most right. part, you can ask incredible rooms of he humans who are super educated. You ask them like very simple things like how does digestion work? How does your period work? And like very, very few people actually know. And I think I've always been curious, like why we believe so much in marketing. Right. Right like learning some basic biology and then your bullshit radar can be like so well honed and like you you just won't buy shit if you understand how it works so well, we, we also live in a world where we um nowadays that we allow our marketing to to, yeah. to educate us which is not how it should work we marketing is not an education it's a selling of a product correct and and google isn't always like as we are finding now during covid the most reliable source of information so neither is social media. So I think, you know, I think I'd always been so curious about like why we just kind of like give our ag agency over our bodies to like all these other like mostly products. Mm -hmm. There's kind of two ways, and particularly as a woman, but I think for everybody, you kind of find your way to your body. And like for women, it's pregnant, pregnancy or pathology. You get sick or knocked up. <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> um, and it's usually when something goes, goes wrong. And so when I was pregnant, you know, of course, like the internet knows you're pregnant. So like you just start getting, you know, all of this information, lots of right. advice from people that you don't necessarily ask for. Mm -hmm. from. And I, and I knew that I wanted to do something that would nudge the world forward, 
that was going to be a totally new lens. Like, like if it was going to be in health and I really knew I always wanted to be in the body. My mom died when I was 17. And I think ever since going through that experience early, like I just kind of always felt like I knew I was biology, health in some way. And I had kind of watched a lot of the noise start. And of course, very good noise. I think the wellness industry has certainly attuned people to like caring about their bodies and being conscious of them. And so I feel like the consciousness is now there. And I'm like, okay, but what do you do, do with it? Um, and I felt that there was just so much confusion, so much sensationalization, hyperbolization mm -hmm. of like claims, and this does this, and this detox is this, and this does this. And look, everyone has to find their way to, you know, health, health in some ways, sure. those things, but it wasn't my, wouldn't have, wouldn't be what I want to put out in the world. And so I felt like it had to be like, the cool thing in tech is like, you can, you could be at the beginning of stuff, you know, like at the very beginning of things or like, and, and, and I wanted to be in a field that like every day I'd wake up and you were like chasing, it. like it would always be evolving, like mm -hmm. AI, machine learning, like it just things that are really like game changing. And the microbiome was just that that thing where I was like, microbes, the research is always never going to end. No. And we're only going to continue to realize more and more. It's changing constantly. I mean, when, yeah. when, when we wrote the body book, that was the big, nobody knew what the microbiome yeah. was. Exactly. We like, literally, it was one of those things when I would get asked always when the book came out, what's your favorite? What was yeah. the favorite thing you learned about yeah. Uh, researching the book and I was like the microbiome hands down it's the most incredible science that's 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 happening right now and it's 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 just happening exponentially it's happening so quickly and we're learning so much constantly about what the microbiome is and what it does yeah. and um and and I think that's you know like you said that's a that's going to be an ever changing and applicable right so now we can apply things that we didn't know we could apply for our well-being Yes, exactly. And I think that with you, it was it was with your breastfeeding, uh, your, yeah. your 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 first yeah. child that, that that brought that into to exactly. your consciousness as far as yeah. like what you could apply. And really, and to make a very much longer story short, three months into breastfeeding, couldn't supply all my child's uh, my son's breast milk. And for someone who's like spent a lot of time looking at this space, you start to, you know that breast milk is like basically the fertilizer for an infant's microbiome. And it's kind of what forms their uh, right. and GI system. And it was just debilitating, you know, demoral obviously somewhat demoralizing, but also really like with exception for saying, okay, well, we're going to start with reinventing infant formula from a microbiome perspective. Mm -hmm. um, surprised how little science goes into a lot of formulas um, that, that consider the microbiome. Um, well, they, they think of nutrients in formulas. Right. They're not really looking about, they're, they're, they're delivering the micro and the macro, and they're not looking at like the microbe, which exactly. is the other aspect yeah. of it. Exactly. And so, um, and so that was really what started it. And then we realized that there was so much more opportunity as we started kind of connecting the dots in, in, with a lot of the scientists, like Marty being, you know, certainly one of them that you know, um, and realize that there was a much bigger opportunity um, to really think about, you know, how where microbes going to play a role in like how we brush our teeth, how we think about like taking care of our skin, mm -hmm. um, obviously things like infant formula, and then, you know, other areas that were around environmental health. And then the brand was really built out of that. The reason that we're called seed is because a uh, seeding, uh, mm -hmm. as you can from your work with Marty and also from his wife, Gloria, is um, the process by which a baby first gets their microbes. Mostly big, the mother load kind of comes at birth. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, they start acquiring them from the environment um, as well. So that, that's kind of how we got our name and how we got started. And, and also the mother's breast milk. That's why when you stopped yeah. breastfeeding, you were concerned about how she was, how your son was, it's your, your you have a son, right? I guess I was, I was sorry. I'm only she right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, your son was going to get his microbiome yeah. built up, not yes. just from external, but up from our, what, what you produce as a mother. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about seeding, um, the gut, <laughs> and how important that is. Yeah. And what we sort of in this day and age right now in, you know, sort of well, the wellness space, we have this sort of like gut mania where 
yeah. and these are your that's your guys's term which i i really 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 love your guys's instagram it's so okay. fantastic and your website but the instagram the series that your guys are doing right now with your chapters and i yes. anybody who wants to really really understand what we're talking about what yeah. you have to do is you have to go to inst their instagram page at seed mm -hmm. and you have to look at their chat they have chapters of basically walking you through what the microbiome is and it's so informative um and the one chapter chapter four that really kind of gives you everybody the idea understanding of um sort of what's happening right now as far as like you know what people are purchasing to or what they're consuming to help build their microbiome isn't necessarily um you know a uh, uh it's not necessarily a probiotic Yep. Right. It's the, it is, but it doesn't affect your actual microbiome when you consume it for so many different reasons. And I'll let you go ahead and, and talk about those, those. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Pro, I mean, probiotics, obviously, like, and, and well, let's start with your, what you said earlier, which is that you have 38 trillion microbes um, in and on your body. That's in every, pretty much every surface that touches the the environment. So like there's even like an optical microbiome, there's a nasal microbiome, an oral microbiome, skin microbiome, um, vaginal microbiome, as we talked about, uh, but majority of them. And the reason there is so much, gut there's made... even a scrotum microbiome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Um, just to make this as inclusive as possible. It just, um, it's everybody's got, every yeah, part's got every... its own microbiome. <laughs> there's one thing it's like, it's kind of like everybody poops, like everyone's got a microbiome. Exactly. Um, <laughs> And so well, I wish it is your microbiome. <laughs> yeah. So, but the majority, the reason there is so much gut mania is that like a majority of these microbes do reside in your gut. Um, and so there's a lot of misconceptions though, like about probiotics, like the idea that you're kind of like missing something. And then by like taking probiotics, like you're putting them back. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not exactly kind of how they work. They're actually kind of transient microbes that as they travel through your body, they're doing things. But they don't stick around. They're they don't necessarily stick around that long. Mm -hmm. um, kind of their not. lifespan is like they're, they're if they're, they don't get what they need to yeah. live, they die off. If they get too much of something, they die off. Yeah, but it's also but really like probiotics are just not intended to. They they they're not intended to stick around. They're intended to move through your body and do right. things with other microbes, and they interact with other human cells. Um, one of the things that I really loved about what I what I learned from you guys when I first started working with you, which was, a, a, I think at the time that you told me it was sort of like, a, and what you kind of you guys built your your um, probiotics off is is strain specific. Yes, yes. And that's the other thing, which is like really understanding that, like, I think people kind of talk about probiotics, like, it's like, I like books. It's like, I take my <laughs> There's so much specificity. There's thousands of different strains of bacteria. And so really on exactly what strains. So for example, very specific strains of the same species can do wild different things in the body. So like the specificity of the strain and then also the dosage that the strain was like, if it was studied in clinical research, a big loophole that happens when you go by probiotics is that they're not using the dosage that was studied in the human clinical studies. So say they take a strain and then they'll say, oh, we have the strain that does this, but it doesn't mean that it's the correct amount. It, it, a, it sometimes doesn't mean that they often don't even say that, that what strain it is on the label. But right. you, you don't, a lot of times they don't even have the correct uh, amount of it. And, that, and that's before you get into some of the like really details of like, how was it fermented? What was the pH? What was the media that was used? Is it the same mm -hmm. exact, uh, conditions? as was used in the trial. And so it's just interesting, like there's a lot of loopholes and I think um, a lot of companies take advantage of um, what people don't know about the space. Um, and then of course that, that prompts another question, which is like, what even constitutes a probiotic? Uh, mm -hmm. There's a very, very specific scientific definition of the term probiotic that was offered uh, by the U uh, UN and WHO um, and a lot of, you know, like that, if you follow that definition, things like kimchi and kombucha wouldn't really be probiotics. Right, right. So that's an interesting thing. So like, there's a several reasons why the kombucha and like kimchi, they're like kimchi might, they, they, they can contribute to your microbiome in a way like the kimchi is a cabbage, it's fermented, it's yeah. breaking down. I 
Chris. That yeah. becomes a, a, more of a um, uh, a prebiotic, right? Mm -hmm. It gives it gives the fuel for the microbes that live in your stomach already or your digestive tract to like utilize that for themselves. Yep. But it doesn't necessarily deliver a probiotic to it. A another part, another aspect of probiotics is um, it, it, whether or not they can pass through the gastric juices that like you're your, in your stomach if they can survive yep. and get through that because our stomach the, the the acid is meant to just decompose like just disintegrate whatever yep. goes into it so they have to get that those microbes we have microbes in the stomach but the the yep. bulk of what the microbes you're talking about in the microbiome is throughout our entire digestive tract through our small large and colon yeah um, small intestines, large intestines, colon, so that we have um, that those by to get those uh, microbes or prebiotics to yep. that part of your digestive system, it has to get through that. And seed actually has a capsule that gets it past the, the stomach um, yep. acid into the digestive tract, which I think is incredible. And yep. so most most probiotics go down and they just get they don't even make it into the digestive tract. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say many go, so to speak to a couple of things, so many go in, um, and if they're not, they're already not in the right dose, so you have so much die off already, like, just just in the stomach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you, uh, so yes, there's a tremendous amount of die off, like, just, just through the GI system. Um, and then the capsule that we have actually, uh, it puts a probiotic inside of a prebiotic capsule. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have incredible data, actually, it does a few things, you know, one of the things that people also sometimes don't consider is the temperature variability uh, when something shifts you. Um, so there's like a lot of places in the world where it's very hot, for example. So if you think about it, the same technology that gets the capsule to the colon allows it to um, survive uh, digestion, which is a very tumultuous process, to your point, mm -hmm. stomach most acidic, and that's where a lot of uh, microbes do die off. Um, mm -hmm but then also allows us to really ensure stability um, for particularly to people who are in like hotter areas um, mm -hmm. or where it might kind of sit in a, you know, like a back of a truck for example, for a while. Um, so Cause they have to be alive to work inside of you. They can't be dead microbes. They have to be yeah. alive. <laughs> like they have to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> and the two things I was going to say, which, you know, and this is just, this is where like I become the worst salesperson, but are the most scientifically integrous is that, Yes, we do believe that survivability is very important. I will. I have to say that there is even research that dead microbes can signal to other microbes. No, I don't think that's maybe at scale across every single strain, and, and certainly it's research that is starting. But just to be as scientifically integrous as possible, it is. It would be unscientific to say that just because something is dead, there's some evidence to believe that it potentially. Right have an impact at some point uh, and with specific strains under specific conditions and specific endpoints. And then the second thing is that, you know, a lot of clinical research is not done with our capsule and still has a positive outcome in specific dosages. And so just again, to be as scientifically integrous as possible, we, we believe in and I will sell our product all day, but a lot of clinical research is done with specific strains and has positive statistically significant outcomes um, and isn't done in our capsule. Um, and so we do believe it is incredibly important. It confers value for a number of other, for a number of other reasons. Um, but it doesn't mean that like anything that's not in our capsule also can't be potentially. Absolutely. But, but it's about what you're, what you're trying to achieve, right? Yeah. So if you're trying to get more in, uh, I think that, that, you know, a capsule definitely helps deliver that. And also one of the things that you guys said was that anything that has to be refrigerated is likely not to be able to make it and you know uh, uh, live through the process of digestion um and so because if it can't live outside of a refrigerator how's it going to live inside of a body yeah. that's not the same temperature of a refrigerator yeah. Yeah. you know if this if it loses its stability and it doesn't and it dies off it, outside of a refrigerator it's not going to work in the body yeah, we, we, I think the whole refrigeration idea like that, that people have kind of anchored into, which is like, if it's refrigerated, it must be kind of fresher and better, just is not, um, it's just not the, it's not the same across, you know, it, it's, it's a big generalization. It's a little bit of marketing. We, we don't, I don't think a lot of people have a lot of the data that we have on like stability. Mm -hmm. um, 
we actually do this crazy test in, in, a, in a system called Chime, which is like the simulation of the human gut. So we actually know exactly how many microbes like at every stage of digestion um, are dying off even a little bit or where they're delivered to. And I just think a lot, yeah, and, and, and we have kind of really interesting heat stability data too. So it, I think a lot of the companies also are just not maybe as transparent as about some of it. But again, as I said, it doesn't mean that some of them can't be very effective. Sure, absolutely. Look, I've been taking probiotics. I took, I started taking acidophilus when I was 16, 17. I remember like, you. Yes, I have, I have no idea why. I was just like, acidophilus, I need it. And yep. I started, you know, and I would just <laughs> take it every single day. Um, yep. And uh, so there was another thing that I wanted to see. Let me put my glasses on. Hold on a second so <laughs> I can see. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Um, I, I, um, I have so much new empathy for you as a celebrity. Like I have seen every, like I, the, the, the variability of, com of, com of comments, oh, and yeah. what you, it's, I mean, of <laughs> experience, like about your, like, yeah. It's, Welcome to my world. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love I love being able to see at where people are calling in for, or watching yeah. in. And I, I am so grateful for all of you people, all of, the, you know, the, the people that take the time to watch and who are enthusiastic about being present. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm, mm, I love everybody for, for your continued support. And, um, you know, also just being able to, like, bring something like this to everyone so that they could really this to me is like the most important yep. well-being science there is you guys like honestly th this is going to be as this the the research and uh, the knowledge builds about the microbiome this is what's going to be our future in all well-being uh, how they treat every single disease every single from mental health which they already do use um, probiotics to microbes to help with depression and um, with, uh, um, you know, um, autism. Um, there's all kinds of, of, of you know, uh, systemic, you know, the systemic sort of uh, well-being um, and illnesses that is yep. being treated with it, you know, and irritable bowel, uh, irritable bowel, um, Crohn's, yep. all of these diseases that are plaguing our our country, specifically in America, but all over the world, um, microbes, it all is a balance. It all comes from our imbalance of, of microbes. Yep. And so th to be able to share this with everybody who shows up to, to listen, um, I, I really appreciate it, even if they're not necessarily here to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, but, but we, I we just want to let you guys know. <laughs> yeah, we we say at Seed, um, you know, uh, meet them where they are, which is like you know sometimes you have to create different doors for people, you know, for people to walk through. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, somebody I saw, I think what I saw was um, somebody asked something about soaps on our our skin. Mm. Um, you know whether or not. Um, that you know soaps mess up our or kills our our microbiome uh certain so certain preservatives absolutely disrupt uh the skin microbiome um and i can actually af after if you would like we can kind of send you if you would like to post um for mm -hmm. anyone we can send you a few ingredients actually from cleanser what they call surfactant um cool. the skin microbiome we're actually very deep in a lot of our skin r d right now um okay. so it's very for us yeah we somebody also asked i don't know if you if if you, we can kind of work it in oh, but they yeah, asked, yeah go ahead but um i saw a comment go through that said um or a question that said what disrupts our microbiome and it's the same for everyone um so i'd be happy to kind of do and i'm sure you know a few too absolutely somebody asked also if they could get it in europe yes we we um we shipped to 44 countries ah, that's amazing i'd love it <laughs> are you're one of them um because there's at least 44 countries on on uh on this right now <laughs> which is amazing yeah. um let's see uh oh let's talk about women's health um what's the future what are we looking at what can we look what can we be um asking uh or looking forward to in women's health with microbes uh, it's 
<laughs> well, let's start with you have a vaginal microbiome. So there's a very specific ecosystem in the gut that works very differently than the gut. So if you think like the most reductive way to talk about, to think about this is like the gut, one of the, one of the things that we know is a marker of a healthy gut is diversity. So think like lush rainforest. Mm -hmm. The vagina, you don't want diversity. You want it dominated by like a single uh, bacterium. So it's it, that 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 in itself just shows you like how fundamentally different those are. And we know that the vaginal microbiome is incredibly important. Like the mi the microbes in our vagina are incredibly important for like regulating pH, um, as an example, and just maintaining and obviously not making it a hospitable environment for pathogens. Like for example, what causes like a um, or the dysbiosis, which means just kind of the out of balance-ness of that ecosystem. That mm -hmm. be. But it's also markers where you're, that, are, that make you more susceptible uh, to very specific STIs. Um, so we know that now that the, and actually our, the scientist that we work with on all of our women's health work, he just published uh, the most comprehensive gene catalog of the of the vagina <laughs> for, of the vaginal microbiome. That's kind of like the equivalent of like, do you remember when like the human genome was like sequenced? Yeah, the, yeah. It's, like it, for women's health, it's like the equivalent of that. Right. Um, obviously, it's the vagina and it's women's health, so the people don't care as <laughs> care as much. Um, but it is it, it, <laughs> it's so fucked up, but it's true. <laughs> but it was a real. Like, like, women's health and what it will mean, like just to put it in perspective, something like UTI, 50% of women in the world get a UTI, urinary tract. It's the leading reason that people, a bleeding infection that's diagnosed in the United States every year, about 10 million women, 150 pe people, 150 million like globally, 35, over 30% of those people have a, re a recurrent urinary tract infection. And there is currently under the FDA not one that's recognized. Wait, say that last part again, because it just cut out. It's considered an unmet medical need. It's, there's no primary center of care. So what women, what happens is women get in basically like antibiotic cycles over antibiotic cycles. Which is the worst thing because antibiotics kill microbes, good and bad, bad yes. and good, Correct. right? Very indiscriminating. Now, gr granted, antibiotics will save your life in the right moment. So it's not like they're all bad, but as you know right. from Marty's work, like, that that those cycles have other downstream effects um and not to mention the fact that antibiotic resistance for for many of those frontline that you know antibiotics is almost at like 20 percent. so right. there's not work um and that and there's a lot of reasons for that and so we're we like the future of women's health really probably going to be looking at how you take microbes probiotics not not necessarily antibiotics um and how those will be applied um, and thought about for like these really big conditions in women's health um, and all these disruptions to the vaginal microbiome. I mean, even menstruating, like even getting your period, getting your period and having sex are like the two biggest disruptions to the vaginal microbiome. One, of course, happens every month. For some people, <laughs> it happens very quickly. Um, yeah. But um, those, well, there's those also like, like oral sex as well, right? Saliva yeah. is a really big disruptor for the vagina. Especially if, say, the guy's been drinking beer. Yep. Right. Or, or, or a number of other things. Yes. Or a number of other things. But like, there you go. You've got a mouthful of yeast and yes. you're just and applying it. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fingers um, and even same sex sex. Mm -hmm. um, so women, like, they've done studies with women um, who only have male partners. Uh, and also, um, there, there are other, just the exchange of that, flu of that fluid. Uh, very much um, contributes to, to some some of those factors for uh, causing dysbiosis in the vaginal microbiome, and and we know how important and it's also incredibly important for fertility, um, also uh, and preterm birth. We know it's mar has markers for so right. Well, also when um, one of the most fascinating things about like the female body is that right before birth, the vaginal the vagina actually populates itself with other microbes that help support <laughs> yeah. the baby's uh, microbiome as they pass through the vaginal canal, lactis bialis, which is um, able to help them to be able to break down the mother's milk, right? To digest milk, which is like incredible. Um, 
And there's and there's microbes that have evolved to live on the nipple, actually, that also help digest lactose. So you just to see how like crazy our bodies are. And yeah. actually, they are, you know, you were talking about breast milk earlier, you know, about a thir the third of the carbohydrates in breast milk um, are, are only are not digestible by the infant. And they are only microbes for the for the babies, like basically fertilizer for their microbes. Right. It's meant to just stay in there and like, fertilize. Them. Right. Yeah. Fertilize. I love that. I love it. Um, well, let's talk about um, you as a female founder. Oh, yes. Which I really love. I mean, this is, uh, you know, one of those things that I know it's sort of, it's, it's silly. It sounds like, oh, what? Like, of course, there's female founders. Of course, <laughs> women start companies. Um, but th it is a term that's been kind of now uh, being used a lot more in the last sort of five years or so because of um, the fact that women are just kicking ass, you know, and they're being really, um, you know, it's, we're sort of out in front with these companies, especially something that's like seed that's born out of really the experience of being a mother um, mm -hmm. and having, bringing that forward as a woman and realizing as a lover of science and all of what you, you know, your passions that you, that it feels like this company could really only be founded by a woman <laughs> you know yeah and, yeah yeah no I, I and I appreciate that I mean they, I, I I do have a co-founder who is a, a guy of um, course I, I, I love Raj <laughs> um, right uh yeah no it's it's an interest I mean look it's a really interesting moment to be a woman in general I think like so many things have obviously sh shifted culturally um hopefully for hopefully for the better um and uh when you know when the pendulum kind of keeps when it sw you know, sw swings and finds its way to the middle, of, I, of course, coming from Hollywood, you know, it's been a huge calibration, right? Like a totally, a, a very, probably very different from when you first, you know, when you first Absolutely. started. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As somebody who interned for Harvey. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. It's a very new world. Um, and so, yeah, and, and but I, but yes, I think like, you know, I think sometimes there's, I, there's two sides of it. There's a part of me that hates the term because they're like, you don't say male founder. I'm just mm -hmm. like, like I wake up, and I work really, really hard. And it's not, not because I have a vagina. <laughs> and, and so like part of me, and like when you go to like the conferences and they're like, we're having a female founder breakout set. And, um, and like, I'm like, oh, this is, I didn't know this was a Hasidic wedding. I, th I think like, I realized that. And so, <laughs> like a cynical part of me, which is, I'm not sure if the designation is, is, is good in the long run, right. but in this time where we need to inspire the next generation, the women who are like, oh, I could do that, or I can do that. And you need to kind of call out and have the ways that you can like highlight and, um, you know, give platforms to groups of women who are really paving the way in a lot of these, in a lot of these fields, I think it serves a purpose, like mm -hmm. right now. And I think you're right. Like, I think, you know, sometimes I think women, you know, there's a lot of stuff around like women's stuff where, where you're like, well, it's because I'm a, it's, is it because I'm a woman? It's because like, it can't be because I'm a woman. But I, I actually think like, you know, look, I, I, to your point, like I, I, I created a human being in my own body and then it came out of me and then I fed it with my own body. Like yeah. I have a very specific perspective and probably am very well positioned to start this company. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think sometimes, I, so yes, I like that, that biology, that experience combined with, of course, my other work experience, not just related to the fact that I'm a woman, um, absolutely contributed to, to kind of, and I think that's why Raj and I are, are really good compliments to each other. And I think, um, I think sometimes that, experience and perspective absolutely does, you know, is, is very much contributes to, and is a compliment to just because the science says something a certain way, you know, how people have to hear it or how a woman, um, not that we are just for women, but just, you know, how people will hear it is a big, is a big part of um, kind of calibrating. And so I, 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 I definitely think it's like right time in your life. Uh, for me, it was post, you know, post human, having a human, um, <laughs> And also just like existential crisis of like, how can I make an impact? And so, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's a, it has a big difference. Um, and I, I, and one of my favorite things to do is of course mentor and help other female founders too. So.
That's, and what is, what does that look like? What is the, as a mentor to other women, I, I imagine like, what is the thing that you do that you say sort of most, what is the thing that you kind of give them that you feel that the first thing you say here, this is what you should know if you're the, I, how to do this. If you're asking me like the most common denominator, and I don't think it's, you know, necessarily just, just with women, although I do find that this is like the most common, common thing when I get asked for advice, there's a, there's an instinct. I think it comes up a lot around fundraising. Like they, like I, I have found they, I'm about to say they, but I, I really, I don't like generalizations, but the, the ability to give power away so easily. And that, mm -hmm. that means is like the feel, like the, the experience is dictated by like the other person, whether it's an investor, whether it's an employee, you're having trouble with whether it's a co-founder um it just i just find that sometimes women forget their agency and right. they little perspective shift of like if you write the email that like is that a is it gonna feel good <laughs> and b like sh a should it be an email um but also like what are you giving away by letting them make this process like uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of like scarcity it's a bit of um, give your power away and like forget that like you can be in charge if you just change the words and the way the narrative is. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think it's like give your power away, change the story. Mm -hmm. Like the narrative is really a new. Well, I mean, I it's a it's a funny thing because I don't think that we're so aware of the narrative. The narrative just it's not it's not a narrative. It's just it exists as uh, as. as life as, as, you're... as if this is just what it is you know yeah. so it's sort of like when you give somebody the permission yes you know and or the insight that there's a narrative happening that has been written but that it can be rewritten and it's up to you to decide what the narrative is yes and you get to pick the characters and you get to like decide yeah. what the, the, the storyline is and you get to put put it into you get to tell it as you speak Yes. to every person that you walk into the door and sit in front of or comes through your door and sits in front of you, that whatever you're saying to them is actually what they will then understand about what it is that your business is, who you are within the business, what you're capable of, that you're, that you're not like, that you're not just the, the narrative that yeah. exists in the world, you have your own. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And and that and that it can and that it has also the permission to evolve. Yeah. And, and that of that's, course there's that's, chapters. <laughs> yeah. It's like this is my first chapter, bitches. All right. Yeah. Wait till the second. You know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> and he is about all the things I screwed up in chapter one and two. Exactly. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. For yeah. sure. And a um, lot of a lot of the last piece of advice is a lot of times just. Um, I, it's kind of, it's like the book I've always wanted to, to write is called Save Draft, which is like, not every, like you may need to press send on that, like send it to yourself, but it's like, does, does everybody need to know that? Yeah, that's really interesting. It's editing, like knowing yeah. when to like edit yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a really, that's really good. Save the draft, go back and read it again. It's sort yeah. of like, I mean, look at, I don't, I don't send out selfies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not into the picture of like, cause then, um, the, but if I go back and look at it after like huh? a week later, I'm like, it's not so bad. Okay. I can't, or, oh, thank God yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Thank you. you. Know I mean? like, no. <laughs> we're safe to the camera roll, you know? Yeah. Um, Breath and then perspective is kind of like the, the, the most often advice I think after the other ones. That's so great. And so where do you, like, how do you, I look, with with building a company there's like you said your your next chapter is going to include what you learned in the first chapter right yes. so there's always going to be um there's always going to be a uh uh oh my god my girlfriend's stuck in my backyard <laughs> <laughs> she, she's she's like she's like will this gate open by itself um there's <laughs> Just don't type your gate code into the comments. I'm not going to. I am not. <laughs> uh, um, what is it called? Motor. Um, 
um, I mean, somebody's got to go help her out. This is going to be really horrible. <laughs> um, so basically, the, so you, you have the chapters, right? And you're going to look back and you're going to say, these are the things that I, I learned and what I, what I messed up and what, I, what I'm going to do better this time, right? But there's so many ups and downs. And a seed has been super... Like, I think, I'm not going to say, I don't know exactly all the challenges. There's yep. so much, especially with science and sourcing, yes. I'm sure, because you guys get your microbes from all over the world. Yes. And, you know, you're, you're, you're also, this is an environmental product, right? It's a, it's a agricultural in a way, or not agriculture, because you guys don't necessarily like grow it. You, you forge it, forge for <laughs> it, or you have a source for it, but um, you know, you're dealing with the changing of the climate and how all the things of the possibilities where our planet planet's going and whether or not you have enough of the your resources, right? So yeah. you have all those those things, but it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. How do you keep going? How what's your inspiration? Like how do you stay in the game? Oh, what that's pushes you forward? I mean, there's a few, there's a few things that come, I mean, look, the, the, the most basic and most human one is that we impact people's health every day. So like, you know, at, at the very, 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 and, and health in general, you know, I think, um, you know, whether, you know, certainly I think we're just at the beginning of and scratch the surface of our like sustainability effort. But, you know, I think in, in, in some ways, like the way that we impact people, like sometimes it is through our products, but to your point, like a lot of times it is actually just through our education and our content and the fact that you can shift someone's perspective or change their mind or help them or ask a question that evolves their point of view about something. And I think that in itself is so impactful. I mean, outlook, look, every day I get to wake up and I, I, try, I move things like a urinary tract infection drug forward, yeah. which has bacterial vaginosis drug which like when that happens like changes literally that changes. Doesn't, but that doesn't that doesn't even exist right now you're Correct. creating something that doesn't exist and it's such a massive problem that I, god damn it I, every time i do these igs at five o'clock i forget to plug my damn phone in and by the time it's like at the end of the ig it's like you're gonna die <laughs> your um, battery is uh, gonna die I'm, I'm, also, I don't want your friend to be stuck in your backyard. No, um, she got out. She got out. <laughs> um, and I mean, so look, so very basically, like we have the opportunity for impact is, is, is so meaningful, so meaningful. Like from the people who write us every day saying that like your product, you know, anecdotally, it like X, Y, and Z changed my life. Like these are things that you're just, you know, we created something and mm -hmm. now this person live without it. Um, that's extraordinary, you know, and, and as you know, like when you did your book, like, you know, when people live with different conditions, symptoms, whatever, like those things are inc like, you know, so, and, and we hear that through customer care, through social media. And I think that for, that for me always feels like is so, so meaningful. I think the second, the second piece is that, um, and I think it, it, that for, I can speak to me personally, it, it is that feeling that you nudge the world forward a little bit every day like that, that 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 and even even just that educational thing we've done on instagram like the impact the response we get the the way we translate covid information like our commitment to how we even just translate science itself mm -hmm. it at the it just it's incredibly inspiring i learn something every single day and i get to create and that is very that's very rare um to yeah. be able to like create while you're can 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 currently like learn like literally learning something mm -hmm. every day. and i think that um and every day we wake up and there's new science to like look at yeah um so there's like i think just from like a fulfillment perspective humanistic side the existential side like that's all like incredibly meaningful and the third thing is that i absolutely i love working with my co-founder and i love our team we just have like the most like i like people when i speak to recruits like always like well, I've really talked to more, a lot of people on your team now and they're just, they're pretty amazing. I'm like, yeah, they're a pretty special group of human beings. And I think there's something that has just gelled in our little, we've been so protective of our ego. Yeah. I, I really mean it. Like I, I like I get excited by getting Slack messages. I love, <laughs> I love our, 
I, I truly like we, I just love, I love who we get to do it with. And I think sometimes that, that of course is a big impact of the quality of the work that goes out in the world. So, but this is like a metaphor, right? For like what you guys are creating as a yes. product, right? Like the yes. fact that you're creating the, uh, a mic, like a yes. well-balanced microbiome yes. <laughs> that of course you're going to have a group of people who coexist in a, in a, a, you know, a, a peaceful and productive way, you know, um, it's, it's from, so good. From such diverse perspectives and backgrounds, which I think in different companies and, you know, like, yeah. like if somebody, we have like, you know, some, uh, people who come out of like working at like fashion tech um, and like LVMH companies working next to like Harvard, Harvard immunologists, you know, it's right. like, it's so great next to like our operations person who worked at SpaceX, you know, it's such well, a, you know, this, this is another thing. So like team building is really important, right. As an entrepreneur um, and you know, that balance that, you know, curi in this particular situation, curiosity is a really great quality for people to have right because you, they're essentially they are they're marrying these this one they, thing they know to apply it to something they know yes. nothing about but they're learning about it and vice versa right yes. so like in team building for your you know in building a company especially a company from scratch you know like just creating a brand that didn't exist and putting it together what are the sort of things that you look for um in in bringing people on board as a t part of your team? Well, you, you hit the first one on the head, which is genuinely curiosity, because of course not everybody on our team comes from a scientific background, myself included. Um, so it's, it is like that, that certainly that curiosity. Um, th this kind of quality of being able, like deep what we call individual contribution, which me is a very, very Harvard business review way of saying, get a lot of shit done <laughs> and do it very, very, very well. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, that's like pretty much like really what we, what we look for. In addition to the get a lot of shit done, the give a shit. So like the notion of accountability, of deep caring about what you put out in the world, but also for each other um, right. and about our work, like the greater, bigger vision. So like the give a shit. Is, is like, who are you as a human? Um, how do you think about like what goes out um, and, uh, and how you can contribute? Um, and, then, and then there's, there's kind of empathy, I think is another big one because we do have such varied perspectives and backgrounds. Um, so like really think, and, and I don't mean just empathy, like as a throwaway word, everyone, it's kind of like the new, you know, drinking game to say empathy like these days, but like, but like empathy of like, you know, really what are, what is somebody trying to say to you um and like can you really think about what they're trying to accomplish um even if they're not doing it exactly the way you would do it and i think that's like a very uh important one because stylistically people are different um and then the last one is um impeccability of your word which means like re just exceptional writing oh yeah. everyone like are exceptional communicators and writers mm. Fantastic. That's such great, great uh, advice and, uh, and perspective. Um, I'm really afraid my phone's going to die. No, no. Um, but this is what I wanted everybody to know. So the, I think that every, there's so much to talk about in the microbiome and so much information. The science is so incredible. Yeah. Um, and again, I really want to urge everybody to go to seed at seed on Instagram and look at all of what, um, all the information that's been, um, uh, posted there by the seed team of scientists, the leading scientists in the microbiome research and application, um, of probiotics. And also, um, seed is available by, uh, subscription. So you can't get it in a store. You have to go to the website, um, mm -hmm. seed.com. Yep. to um get uh to to sign up to get a monthly uh, uh supply that's delivered to you that's mailed to you so check out also seed.com to check out what what um you know the, the product there and there's so many i also love all the imagery of the micro microbes that you guys have they're so beautiful um and all there's a lot of science on on the website as well 
And um, I just wanted to say thank you for all of your knowledge, sharing it with us today about not just the microbiome, but also being a entrepreneur and all of what it takes to, you know, to be successful in building a, a brand. And um, I wanted to just say, you know, I, I have this glass of wine that I want to say cheers to. Um, our our symbiotic re, uh, relationship with microbes and <laughs> how important it is, and the fact that wine doesn't exist without microbes, <laughs> as a true. fermentation process that relies heavily yep. on microbes. That is um, true. <laughs> and um, I just want to say thank you for for doing the work that you're doing. I think it's absolutely incredible. And, um, and again, all of the information that you guys want to know about the microbes is on Instagram, um, at seed and, um, at seed.com for, uh, subscriptions to the product as well as more science. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just really appreciate you. Thank you so much for having, having me. I really, really appreciate it too. Okay, great. Well, I hope to see you soon. <laughs> I don't know when, but okay. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for for being with me and Ara for the last hour. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I brought this conversation to you guys because I really believe that the um, microbiome is the most important science that we have happening right now in our wellness space. And everything that, uh, that Seed is doing there um, above and beyond right now um, doing the most uh, comprehensive research on the microbiome and they have so much information and um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for everything and I'm going to um, look at a couple of these questions because I looked at them earlier and there weren't a lot that were um, microbiome related and there's a lot of greetings from England, from Greece, from Philippines. Hi, everybody. Um, from Iran, uh, there's a lot of greetings and questions of whether or not I'm going to do more films. I am not going to do more films at the moment, um, but I am doing a lot of Instagram lives because I think it's a lot of fun to get to connect with you guys and say hi. Um, and I feel that, uh, you know, everybody's out there in quarantine right now, which is really, really, uh, hard and discouraging, but it looks like, you know, uh, we're getting the swing of it at least. Um, and, um, all of the questions you guys that you have about the microbiome or about the product, you can, will be answered on Instagram or on the website. So check out at seed for Instagram and uh, c.com for the website. And um, it's bath time for me, for my baby. So I have to go um, and I will see you guys. I'm gonna be uh, a backup next week and I'm actually going to have a special guest soon that I'm going to announce that I'm really, really excited about that I think a lot of you are gonna be excited about. I'm just teasing that. Um, and I also have a little project that I'm going to be revealing in the next, um, by the beginning of June that I'm very excited about uh, sharing with all of you. So I guess I'll be talking to you on Instagram um, a bit more. Okay. Everybody be well, and I will see you, see you soon. Okay. Thanks for spending your, your time with me. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye.